Kia ora, Tori. How are you? Kia ora. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, well, definitely. Um, should give you a heads up. We're live right now, and we're going to be joined shortly by Hamilton's Deputy Mayor, Angela O'Leary, who was supposed to be here earlier but had a flat tyre and got caught in the rain and is on her way in oh, now no. to jump on. It's been one of those days. One of those days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how's things in Wellington? Oh, good. You know, we've been on the news a bit this week. Um, it's been a challenging okay. week. <laughs> yeah. um, today was challenging. I had an interview with uh, Jack Tame that'll come out on Sunday. It did not go well. Um, but, you know, I'll just got to stay the course, keep working for Wellington. With Jack being the kind of person who is really well researched, we, we've heard things in the last week that obviously there are some politicians who are scared to face him. Was that something that you took on board when you went in there? Yeah, and he's interviewed me before and he was he was tough then as well and he was really tough today. Um, and look, he did his job. I think um, I was just exhausted. Um, I let my guard down and then it just sort of, you know, it usually just takes one moment, one mistake, and then it all goes downhill from there, which is what happened. Um, and look, just got to get through it, get through the next few days. It's going to be okay. Um, one of the questions that we had come through during the week when we announced that you were coming on, actually, was around how you look after your mental health. Um, you get a ridiculous amount of bullshit from people. Uh, like the the levels you get are absolutely fucking insane. I don't know how you handle it. Um, something like this with Jack obviously riles them up as well and, and stirs yeah. the pot from these people who have no skills in how to use their brain whatsoever. How do you handle that? It's it's quite funny because, you know, last year, my first year as mayor was obviously uh, pretty intense, pretty tough. And if there's one way to kind of jump into the fire... It's, it's having certain headlines about my personal life that, you know, just kind of dominates the media. And at that time, it was really hard and, and my mental health took a hit and, you know, I really had to think about, you know, how, how am I going to change things up? How am I going to get through this? Because I, I don't want to fail Wellington City because of silly mistakes. Um, and, and I have to say that that year just really built up so much resilience um, for me, that I'm almost, while it was really difficult to go through, I'm almost very thankful um, that I went through that tough stuff as well. Because at the same time, um, the amount of people that came out of the woodworks to support me, um, can, total randoms, either emailing, texting, approaching me on the street to give me a hug, was incredible. So I thought, oh, okay, yes, this is really embarrassing, but actually there's a lot of compassion out there and it's going to be okay. Um, and then it, it, it did, it kind of enabled me to... Um, think about my drinking, um, become diagnosed um, with ADHD um, and just kind of become a lot healthier mentally and physically. Um, and it's, it's been okay. I feel like uh, this year has been really solid in terms of setting my foundation um, personally, as well as the mural tea. And I've really had kept my head, tried to keep my head down and really just focus on our long-term plan and getting that through. And so when I make little slip ups about, selling my car which is so unintentional I just I, I do beat myself up a little bit about that because I just got through that year and got things back on track and I don't want to make it you know silly little mistakes really um really disappoint me um but again all it does is just add to that layer of thick skin is it surprising to you just how much feedback you get from people in that role it is a little. I kind of thought that mayors sort of flew under the radar a lot more, um, which is kind of why I went for council in the first place. It's like there's like some public stuff, public engagement. Um, and I, look, I'd love to do that. But the 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 uh, public interest side, the, the news side of things has completely blindsided me. Um, I didn't expect that. And um, look, that's been a that's been a huge learning curve. And while majority of it was was quite negative, um, actually now I can utilise some of that profile and journalism interest to highlight the issues of Wellington. Um, doesn't always work, um, but um, oh, what are you going to do? You know, and and <laughs> someone someone has to do it. And the, the, every now and then I check in with with all my mates. So um, a lot of my friends worked for Dame Jacinda Ardern 
and they, mm -hmm. they were in her office, chief of staff, chief press sec, um, all of them. And I'll just go, is this normal? <laughs> is this is this level of you know negativity normal? And they're like, yeah, unfortunately. So when when you're a progressive politician, especially a woman, especially in Māori, you know, you just kind of have to unfortunately get used to this level. Um, and what's important to me is if I let that affect me and if I fail, they win. You know, that the, those who are pushing against progressive change um, and, and and when I see negativity against me and, you know, the anti-cycle way uh, stuff that you see, when I see rumours um, that are picked up by media uh, about me that are, are, are meant to be dehumanising, um, you know, it's it, all, all I see that is is the privileged trying to stop progress. And so if that's part of change making, well then so be it. I just hope it's not this hard for future generations. Trailblazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why I try to front foot things like, you know, like the neurodiversity stuff. Well, now I've got young ones coming up to me going, oh, thank you, now I feel, I feel normal. And I'm like, well, you're normal. You're definitely normal, but I can see why you feel alone. Um, and so just trying to, mainstream some of the stuff so it's not so hard in the future it, it gets kicked back for sure but um i can handle it um and so i'll just take it yes. any questions Mike, before i start taking things from the the chat yeah um so hi Tori, nice to see you hi blake uh, um so again thank you for um sharing your uh, story about your diagnosis because as also as someone on the spectrum myself, it's given me confidence recently to do things like call councils on the phone and ask them to join my campaign that you know about and uh, mm. so forth. So, um, so thank you for that. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you is we saw this way then and you thought it would be reported uh, wrongly on one of your uh, projects how how does that misinformation in the media cause issues for you as a council i think i missed the second part of the question sorry so misinformation so so, so you remember the story about the silver tear yeah hitting the water oh my the goodness that yeah. Oh, that was ridiculous. Like, so I've been getting complaints about wasting ratepayer money on the silver tier, right? And um, I'm kind of like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and so there's had, had to be a lot of correcting of that. And what what is frustrating as well is that some councillors will even feed into that uh, misinformation. So it's a, it is, that, that's a real tough one. Um, and we just try to just try to be as direct as much as possible. And um, yeah, it, 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 but it's certainly challenging because it's quite a proactive effort um, to, again, whether it's against me or whether it's against council and our initiatives, whether, um, and, and, and cycle ways, it's, it's just, yeah, again, this is, this is what a transformational and transitional period looks like and sounds like. I speak to a lot of leaders from around the world um, who have gone through a similar projects and they're like, Yep, you're at that part of the curve um, where you're going to get lots of abuse. Um, but like in eight years' time, it's just going to be so normalised part of society, um, and and that stuff just tends to die away. You, you talk about um, oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, go for it. You talk about um, meeting with leaders. So we saw you um, a few weeks ago at the local government conference. Um, yeah, let's say you were quite. That, that's, that, was, that must have been a great introduction from the Prime Minister. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, that, that classic conference. You were quite outspoken about your um, thoughts about these speeches. So while you're here, do you have a message for the Minister and the Prime Minister? <laughs> um, because I'm sure oh. the Prime Minister is going to be watching what I have to say. <laughs> um, and look, I, I, I do say this to their faces as well as, you know, in media as well, and vice versa, you know, um, and, and, and a lot of it is, look, this is politics. Um, but, you know, true localism is enabling communities and councils to deliver 
um, themselves. So and, and setting KPIs, uh, um, budget cuts, removing funding, and all of that is, is the best way to disempower a community. Um, and uh, you know, we feed that back. This is how he wants to run thing, run things, run the country, kind of like a company. Um, and you know, I but the, I suppose. The thing that um, has concerned me the most is this proactive effort to undermine uh, te tiriti. Um, you know, whether it's the Treaty Principles Bill, whether it's um, the removal or referendum for Māori wards, all of that packaged up is just creating so much division. And while it's, it is mobilising a lot of um, tangata whenua to come together and go, what are we going to do about this? It certainly brought me and mana whenua uh, together closer even more. Um, you know that it's 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 just it's not nice to see um, you know th this tension, and we just need to make sure it's directed into the um, into the right progress. Okay, I'm going to interrupt for just half a second so we can bring Angela in. Kia ora, Angela. You're on mute. Oh, isn't that just you? think we'd all get that right after all these years, Kia ora. It sounds like you're having a bit of a shit night. Oh, it's a shit week. <laughs> it sounds like it. Kia ora, Kia ora Angela. Um, right, so we've had some questions come through, and it's actually, actually really good that you guys are both here, because I think the questions probably apply to both of you in, in different ways. Um, so one of these ones that came through was actually about the, the referendum um, that's been forced on you guys. Um, Wellington Council, I'm guessing, is paying for theirs. Hamilton Council, I'm guessing, is also paying for theirs. It's it's cor it's correct. We hadn't put it in this budget, the LTP, on purpose, but you know we'll be forced to put it in our next annual plan. We are still seeking legal advice on how we can challenge this, but it's not looking great. Um, um, What's so, the punishment if you yeah. don't? Um, well, we've asked that question actually. What 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 happens if we don't? And we've been told, well, that's essentially breaking the law. Um, that might be a, a fine, and we're like, well, what's the fine? You know, so. It's Those conversations cheaper than a three hundred and fifty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll take it. That's right. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know how you're going, Angela. Yeah, um, yeah, the same. I mean, we we will pay for ours. We haven't got the budget for it either. Um, feels a bit like an unfunded mandate. Yet another one. <laughs> uh, but we'll move through that process of the annual plan, and um, we haven't uh, gone so far as. Uh, deciding whether we, you know, or having a discussion of whether, you know, we would break the law, I, I, you know, it is legislation and we have to follow it. Um, yeah, so. Hmm. Um, what's the feedback you guys have heard from the public about it? Uh, he, we haven't had a lot of feedback. We had a lot of, um, a lot of pressure from the community uh, leading up to the decision a couple of weeks ago to go to a referendum to obviously to, to not disestablish and we had a really powerful part of our community say please don't disestablish the wards um, please go to a referendum so but but since that that you know that sort of quietened down now so I think under the circumstances the community was as happy as they can be with the choice that they had which was of course really one choice um, for Wellington, I mean, we're, we're a very progressive um, city, which I'm so relieved that we are. I, I suppose otherwise they would never elected me. But um, that, so it's been um, overwhelmingly positive, um, overwhelmingly supportive uh, for any challenge that we might want to put up, including um, breaking the law. Um, and um, but I, I tend to take my guidance from uh, mana whenua. And our, our, our iwi leaders and how would you like to approach this because at the end of the day um, it has to be mana enhancing we have to create unity where possible um, and um, and just and, and give as much respect to te tiriti um, as possible so I'll, I'll kind of let iwi leaders uh, guide that way um, So you, you talk about not getting much guidance from the Minister Tory about uh, all government in general about what happens if you don't decide to do these referendums or Maori wars. Does it does it feel like the the classic um thing for this government not giving you much information? I mean, I think um, a lot of councils have found it really really challenging um in terms of um the 
uh, I know for Wellington and other cities, a lack of financial support. I know water, water reform has been very challenging because in comparison to three waters uh, under the Labour government, um, we now don't have that no worse off funding, which is going to impact Wellington City quite significantly. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, other stuff, I, I kind of, so whether it's in my head or not, sometimes I feel like Wellington City has a bit of a target on its back um, when it comes to the government. So I do have to be very careful not to enrage them or they'll send in commissioners because that's a threat that's used on a weekly basis. So, um, you know, for, for Māori rights, I'm tempted to to do that, but I have to think about the, the betterment of Wellington City as well, not, you know, my own passions. And Angela, what kind of luck do you have with the minister or the uh, government? Yeah. On yes. Māori wards, um, we haven't had, to my knowledge, any engagement with any ministers on this issue. We were uh, given a letter from the Minister of Local Government, Simeon Brown, um, along with the other councils around the um, motu that put Māori wards in under the previous government. So uh, the, to, my, um, to my knowledge, that's really all the content that we've had. Have you had much feedback from Ryan? Heard anything from Ryan? For, for those that are watching and listening, Ryan Hamilton, who's the new Hamilton East MP, was on Hamilton City Council up until the election last year. Um, he voted for Māori wards um, when he was mm. on council. Um, have you had any feedback from him at all about this? No, no. Well, I, I haven't. And I don't think, again, I don't think council has uh, formally either. Scary stuff. Mm. Very scary stuff. Um, changing the topic ever so slightly, um, I want to talk about abuse in the jobs that you guys have, which is really a terrible thing to come from a middle-aged white guy like myself. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day after suffragette day. Um, but yeah. th this week, um, you've both had a fair few issues crop up with people, disinformation, problems like that, and, and a bit of chaos coming into play. Um, Angela, you were in the extraordinary meeting for Hamilton City Council on Andrew Bitter. Um, Tori, you have some great people on your council who are working with, was it Bitter Wellington? Is that what they call Bitter it? Well Bitter Wellington, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's disinformation involved in both of those sort of factions that are being out there spreading information about what's going on and, and causing trouble. How do you guys approach that level of disinformation and the vitriol that that brings with it? Tori, do you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, happy, to, happy to. Um, there are so there are a couple of ways. Um, as we know, since you know COVID nineteen, it has really just accelerated against um, a lot of politicians, especially women. Um, Harvard uh, through the Bloomberg program actually sent someone over to my office. Um, they paid for it and did a study on this, which I will send you, Paul um, and Blake, because mm. I think you'll you'll find it interesting about the level of abuse abuse that politicians in New Zealand face. Um, and and it, it is significant, um, mm -hmm. and especially for women of colour. Um, and it outlines what things could be put in place to help combat this issue. The misinformation one is a, is a difficult one. Um, that is a growing, uh, well-funded beast. So we're going to meet with um, an organisation um, to kind of get trained up on how, how to combat that uh, um, and, and, and call it out without trying to spread it further. So I don't have answers to that. In terms of the abuse, um, I'm, I'm very lucky to have a team that just completely um, wipes it before I see it. Every now and then something will slip through, and it, but it's the same every single time. Um, you know, the rumours, the, 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 the attacks, and um, while I'm now used to it, I'm very keen to initiate some of those measures that that Harvard study sets out, which is... Um, oh gosh, I can't think of it at the top of my head, I'm going to email to you that you can send to your followers. Um, and and it, it's quite a realistic way forward on how uh, women can feel empowered to still enter politics. You know, it's, I've been um, watching this, I've been in local government politics for 17 years now. And I've been watching this on the rise for women in particular, and women of colour, as Tori has said, in the last three or four mm. years um, escalate to a point where Tori it was really disheartening to hear you say 
I'm used mm. to it. And what we are what we are dealing with now, um, and we've got on our council in particular, we've got um, a couple of uh, new newly um, elected young women on one in particular who is incredibly wise, incredibly smart. And just having to deal on a day-to-day basis with this stuff. And it breaks my heart because, you know, I started on council back in 2007. And back then I was dealing with misogyny and sexism and all of those other things that women uh, build up our resilient power to sort of look after ourselves against. And it's just gets worse and worse and worse. And I agree with you, Mitori, after the pandemic, um, and a certain person who, um, you know, became president for a, a short amount of time in the US, in my personal opinion, ripped the Band-Aid off and enabling yeah. people to say whatever you want to say to whoever you want to say, and it's all okay. Um, and when the president of the United States does that, well, you know, anybody can. But just um, having to deal with social media now, for me, particularly with the mis and disinformation that's around there, is is very hard. I don't have um, a team of people to help me, and most elected members don't. We are on our own. So even though when I started, I was the first to have a blog, the first with a smartphone, the first on Twitter, the first of all of these things, I now do abs- so much less on social media because of the trolling, the personal attacks and it's not just you know saying you're a dickhead Angela I didn't like that decision is it Tori it is foul and personal and violent comments so my my uh, connection with my followers my ability to do the job to be transparent to go to public events is reduced in capacity it's significantly because of it and and how do we how do we get young people into this role? I, I'd be keen to see um, that paper as well, Tori. If you're happy to Absolutely. share it, because I don't have the answer. Yeah, it, it it kind of um you know talks about things like um I mean there are deep rooted issues that will kind of we can't fix mm-hmm. immediately um in regards to the behaviour of people that put on this stuff yeah. online. Right, we don't have the answer. Well, you know, or it's going to take years to kind of unpack that. Um, but in terms of uh, people who want to stand, so it's working with um, go- government and local um, government New Zealand in setting up, um, you know, resilience training um, and ongoing support to, because you're right, Angela, we're alone when, I, I, you know, when we're getting this um, sort of abuse, we've, we've, we've got our supporters kind of going, you keep going, girl, but there's actually no organisation to go to uh, no. for um, whether it's no. counselling, or training or um, social media support. So that kind of needs to be set up immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are also current organisations that I think um, make the situation even unsafer. I think it's Internet New Zealand or someone, you know, like there are, there are no real protections in place to protect the victims. And, um, mm-hmm. um, you know, and with the digital harm um, commun- and, and hate speech laws being put on the back burner, all of that stuff has just kind of led to this mm. explosion of, of hate towards mm. people who put themselves forward. The only, um, so what, what I've been trying to do is, I mean, yes, I'm used to it, and that's really, that's quite uh, disgraceful, actually, to have to be put into a position to, you know, that, what does that say about society? Um, but I think, um, you know, people have said to me, don't talk about it, don't act like a victim. And it's like, well, I do want to talk about it, and I want to talk about how I get through it so some so people know. Um, and you know, I'm really open about who I am. I, you know, I, I, I'm okay to talk about my personal life. I try to front foot it so it doesn't get turned into something else. And then I just come back and go harder. So, and 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 I, that, that is my strategy at the moment. And as a result, I've had 10 um, wonderful people in the last three weeks approach me to go, I want to stand for local government. Can you help me? So, um, like, I, I don't have the tools to help all women so um, until um, we we set up the foundation and infrastructure to help um, people get into politics, creating that safe pathway, I'm just going to do what I can for now to just get the numbers up and be very blunt about what this involves. 
can I just interrupt there very briefly? That actually sort of ties in really nicely to a question that's come through in the chat from It's in the Ballot. Um, wanted to know whether or not you both think next year you're going to see the best or worst candidates st standing in your area for local body elections. He also did ask before whether or not you guys are both going to go on his show next year. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching um, It's in the Ballot. I, um, I, I really enjoy watching the by-election one for Hamilton and the recent Tauranga election. So, oh, yeah, I'm, talk about I'm the going election. to stand and I'm keen. <laughs> um, I'll grab this one first. Uh, one of the – I'll just preface it with something first before I – pick best or worst candidates <laughs> um i guess it's up to the voters but one of the other things that's come out of all this um stuff is this whole sovereign citizen movement right and um it's it's more than enough to have to deal with mis and disinformation and these types of characters living in a community and attacking us um it's another level above when there's one around or two or three around your table and I know that some councils around the country have these difficult personalities around the table. We have a, 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 um, a challenge in our council as well with this kind of thinking. So best and worst candidates? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's going to be, actually, I think almost, depending on what happens in the US yes. election in November, yes. Uh, we will will see a turn of the tide, or for for best or worst, I guess next October. Um, right? I I agree, and um, I I I am deeply hopeful for the best because I think um, people yeah. are starting to see the downside of a conservative, a deeply uh, a conservative government, and what that's doing to marginalised communities. That it's a, a, that it's actually starting to empower some people to go. What? Uh, who's going to create change? It has to be me. Not me, I mean people who who want to stand. So, um, again, with that crew of people that have started approaching me about standing for Wellington, I'm going to be very proactive about um, generating more candidates for election next year. I'm actually running a training workshop for, um, you know, want-to-be candidates at the end of this year um, because I think that is what it's going to take is, is just some shoulder tapping and encouraging people, look, do you want to be part of, of meaningful change? Do you want to help shape our city into being equal and, and vibrant and one that looks after our future generation? Well, come and join me, man. It's, we, we can do this. We've never um, we've never suffered, and Paul, you would know this, right? We've never suffered from a lack of candidates. Oh, no. We sadly suffered from a lack of voter turnout. Yeah. And I think that's, <laughs> that's really, really our biggest issue. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's just getting yeah. people enthused about it. Um, I... Yeah. I suspect last year or the last election's turnout would have been worse if there wasn't such a media focus on some of those more problematic candidates because it scared people. Like I, I was getting a lot of messages from people with the whole, you know, who can I vote for in my community? Because I don't want to vote for a sovereign citizen. I don't want to vote for somebody who's voices for freedom or spreading disinformation. It, but they were really really um, hidden from the public view as to how they were doing things. Like they, they were told, go out there, don't tell anybody about our affiliation with you and just go do the yeah. job and get elected. And that, that I think, froze some people. They didn't want to vote because they didn't know if they could vote for somebody safe or it got yeah. some people really enthused about it. The, but we're seeing now the media is not reporting those connections anymore. So when you see something like what happened with you, Angela, this week with Andrew, He's deeply connected to New Zealand Loyal. Uh, the Residents and Ratepayers Association is a sovereign citizen organisation run by a three times convicted serious fraud offender. But that doesn't get reported. Um, we've seen it in places like mm -hmm. Southland. Uh, Jasper Boparai on Southland District Council. She's an, a climate change denying uh, spokesperson for Voices for Freedom on Reality Check Radio. Um, you know, there's a lot of those people sort of hidden around the place and media is not telling people anymore which means when it comes to the election next year, they're going to find it easier to fly in under the radar. I think still, you know, I've had a real problem with the whole, and, and I know that everyone in local government does with the way that it's this old fashioned postal ballot and blah, 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 blah. But I still, in, in all of the anecdotal research that I've done and elections I've gone through, people vote on the 150 words in that booklet and the mm -hmm. photo. And, pe and, and anyone can say anything in 150 words and present well in a photo. 
and and I think the majority of voters, unless they're well connected to their local council, um, that's what they. That's the only piece of information they go on. Oh, good lord! It's voter beware, isn't it? <laughs> like buyer beware. <laughs> um, I have a couple more questions for the both of you. First, easy one: Are you both going to run in twenty five? A hundred percent. Angela. I haven't decided yet, and that's actually the first time in my 17 years that I've said that. I, I love my job, so, um, but we'll and, see. Um, do, do, what do you think our future government need to do so we don't have incidents like you had, uh, Angela, this week in your cha- chambers? Yeah. It's quite an easy fix, actually, in my personal view. I think the legislation needs to change. There needs to be a local government ombudsman. Um, There needs to be a national code of conduct, not one for every single council. And I know that local government New Zealand is working on this. And then when there are are breaches of codes of conduct, um, that needs to be investigated by the local government ombudsman. And... There needs to be some serious consequences, including the ability to be discharged from your seat. Because Hamilton in particular, perhaps it's because it's an inland city, for decades has had bad behaviour in the chamber, bad behaviour of elected members. Um, And people can say and behave and do anything they they like. And let's park how somebody votes, because that's the job that they're doing. Um, and never ever lose your job. Mm. You cannot be fired from this job. That's right, isn't yes. it, Tori? I mean, it's, yes. it's the only job in New Zealand yeah. that you literally can get away anything. with anything and cannot be fired, and it's wrong. Yeah, totally wrong. Completely agree with everything that Angela has said. Would you add anything, Tori? Uh, no, I think. I mean, it, it is a it's a it's a national code of conduct, and and actually being empowered to be able to um, either pull um, um, certain roles or a person from an elected position, because uh, you know some of the behaviour that I've seen, even in my council, if you saw that at a board table, that person would be dismissed instantly. Um, but they just get away with it time and time again, and it's 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 just mind blowing to me. Are you all right there? My apologies. The internet decided to die on me. <laughs> yeah. Perfect timing. <laughs> the end of the week, I think it's just a sign that my that everything wants me to give up for the day. <laughs> but like my day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, can people still find you guys online? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Where can people find you guys? <laughs> well, I've reduced mine down to, I came off... Twitter slash X a few years ago. Um, Unfortunately, because, uh, yes, it was an awful cesspit of negativity, but also at the time, this was quite some years ago now, um, I was getting uh, harassed by a then Minister of Government. (laughs) So really badly. (laughs) Um, So now I'm just on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'm on. Is that person still a minister? <laughs> oh, no oh, oh my god! No comment. <laughs> okay. um, I'm on LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Facebook, um, TikTok, um, Instagram. Uh, I I manage my own uh, TikTok and Insta because I find, especially Instagram, those are my people, and I don't get really any abuse on there. TikTok has really accelerated. Um, with their with their comments, but whatever. Um, and Facebook's pretty horrendous. LinkedIn um, is mainly a lot of mansplaining on every single post. People telling me <laughs> some some um, dude telling me, "Well, here's how you actually run a city, Tory," and it's it's just it's my life. Oh. And, and is that Mike who works down at the mechanics who always. who's always done manual labour and never yes, run a city before? Yeah. So um, yeah, lots of lots of splaining there. Actually, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, I use the chat, the three channels that I'm on quite differently because they're different yeah. audiences. And yeah, yeah. But no, I'm too old to be on TikTok, <laughs> and I can dance. 
I can't dance, water. and I'm too old to be on TikTok, and I'm still. <laughs> but you're popular, Paul. That's how we connected. And yeah, yeah. That's true. That, that, it, it's actually kind of a weird thing because, like, I, I, I've, as Angela knows, I've worked with different elements of media in Hamilton for decades. Yeah. Then TikTok comes along, and I was actually trying to prove to a client that TikTok would be right for them. <laughs> And oh. so set it up and I'm like, look, it's easy enough to do. You just talk about what you know. And I started talking about idiots running in local body elections, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just been, since then, it's just gone. That's brilliant. Talking about all the fun people, like um, the ones you would have. Like, yeah. Account. Well, I, I have to thank you, Paul. There was a video that you did about me about a year ago, a year and a half ago around media coverage. And it was it was quite refreshing to see your take. And that's when I was like, I like this guy. He's a good one. It, it does help that I've got two postgraduate degrees in oh, media theory. Brilliant. So it, it, it makes me feel like an absolute smart <laughs> sometimes, especially when I get to sit there and go, well, you can sit there and complain about bias. I'd, I actually had a comment come through yesterday. Um, somebody going, well, you can, you, you're always pointing out about media bias, but you're very biased. Yeah, I and? know I am. But I, don't, <laughs> I don't deny it. We, yeah, we have so very many strange. Of people who, um, this is a bit unrelated. Who I who we get every week, who who say, "Oh, we love your stuff." So it's really, really good that we make an impact in the world. That's what, mm. that's what I would say. Yeah, and you know what, Blake? That that's all that we want to do, right? And uh, again, in my in my lengthy time in local government, I've observed, and and I know this sounds a little bit generalising, but I have observed over the years that men tend to be attracted to politics for the cut and the thrust of it, you know, the game of politics. Um, and that's fine. There, there may be a place for that if, if, it, if, that, if it's used for good, not yes, evil. Yeah. Um, in my experience, women are attracted to politics to just improve their community. Um, in both of those spaces, I, I think there's, there's space for both of those characters in local government as long as we're all moving forward for the same thing, which is to better our districts and to better our cities and to better the lives of our residents. But unfortunately, the time and space that we're in at the moment makes it really, really difficult to do that. Tori, you're the only female mayor in the Wellington region, aren't you? I know. Um, we've got Anita Baker of Porirua as well. Okay. And in the Waikato, it's all female mayors. Yes, it is. And... Uh, I think it's in the region there are mostly female deputy mayors as well. Amazing. So, yeah. 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 See, it was Wellington's something to not celebrate. The only place that's what was that? Wellington's not the only place that's progressive. The white yeah, is being yeah. run by some of the most brilliant women out there. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much us done for the night because it's nine o'clock and everybody's having a terrible night <laughs> and I think we all need a drink. <laughs> Oh, um, well, thanks. Thank Definitely. you for having me on. And uh, Angela, it was really great to see you. And, um, yeah, and you too, um, a big kia ora to the community who are watching at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I lo love your stuff, Paul and Blake. Thanks, Tori. I'll catch up with you, you sometime soon. Yeah. Wait, we're still here. It's over. I'll find another video.